Welcome to the first CES meeting of uh, June 2022. Uh, today we have a couple topics uh, from Carity, updates on the records and tuples uh, proposal um, slash symbols as weak map keys and uh, updates on the integration of Shadow Realm with uh, HTML. Carity, please go ahead. Yeah, on the, on the records and tuples, mostly on, uh, on the symbol as weak map keys. Um, I believe the, the, the latest update on that is that we, we are going to allow uh, well-known symbols as with map keys, but we're not going to allow uh, symbols created via symbol the four. Those are the ones that will not be suitable as a key in a weak map. Um, so that seems seems that we have a, a, a consensus around that. Um, and and the Secondary topic there yesterday was about the predicate and then whether or not the predicate should be about the nature of the symbol or the predicate should be about whether or not something can be a key and a weak map. Uh, it seems that from implementers feedback, the, 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 the simple solution would be to have a predicate for the nature of the symbol. So whether the symbol is a register symbol or is a well-known symbol or any other characteristics of the symbol, seems that implementers are fine with that. Um, and then in user land, you will have to do the logic um, on trying to prevent putting symbols that are register symbols into a weak man because it will throw an error, something like that. Um, I, I was hoping that we could get the other one, the, the predicate on the, whether or not something it can be a weak map key, but uh, I think that there was some pushback on that from implementers on the basics of, this is a moving target. We don't know yet what else we're gonna add to, to the weak maps uh, as keys and so on. And because it's a moving target in the future, it might be a breaking changes or a, work compatibility problem and we will not be able to really make changes in the future to the weak map keys, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm okay with. So those are the, the two main points. I think there were some other things about records and tuples and, the, and TypeScript specifically, but I didn't follow up on, on the details there. So I don't know the, the details of it, but um, the, obviously TypeScript has already uh, topos on, and so there's a terminology there and some backward part of the features and so on. But I didn't really follow up all the details in that in that topic. So those are the, the two things about symbols uh, as we map keys. Um, so you have any comments or anything, let me know. But I guess that's that a good shape for next week. I have a, one question. Um, so I suppose if we have a predicate to test what kind of symbol uh, a symbol is, um, for polyfills that want to add new uh, well-known symbols, for example, they would have to be, to be faithful. They would also have to uh, polyfill the predicates to fake uh, that symbol being well-known. Yeah, the, a very interesting point. Like if you, you want to add polyfill one, I suspect that you could do that You still can't polyfill because you have to polyfill the weak map as well because you would not be able to. Uh, let me see. Well, well known no, no, would be I mean, a, no, yeah, well known would be fine as well. So it's going to be fine because uh, a well known symbol will be a symbol that is not registered. Right. Um, and and that one will, will make it just fine to the weak map. The one that cannot be. Use is the one that is registered via symbol of four. So it should be very straightforward to have a polyfill for a new no yeah. well known symbol. Yeah, I mean we're in this mess in the first place because well known symbols are not registered symbols. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing of this would be an issue if it wasn't the case. Cool. It will have been an issue if if 
we decide that well-known symbol cannot be added to the weak map keys. Yeah. That will have been an issue. Yeah, yeah. actually that might be an argument uh, for allowing well-known symbols as um, uh, weak map keys because polyfills would have, well, I mean, they, that's not true. They could just use the register symbol in that case. And yeah, I mean, the thing is only a registered symbol can be a faithful emulation of a well-known symbol. Um, so if you're trying to shim a, well, a new well-known symbol and you can only, uh, um, if you do it with an unregistered symbol, there's no way to do it with an unregistered symbol without coordination such that multiple rem, realms that are then put into contact have the same identity for the shimmed well-known right. symbol. Right. So you, uh, so. uh, it's, I mean, yeah, unfortunately that means uh, that shims that need to work across realms for some reason will need some kind of coordination like that. Right. right. Uh, no, I think it's, yeah, I think I got a bower. You're right, Mark. And, but either way, you have to polyfill a bunch of things. Yeah, but um, right. And that means that you have to polyfill because of the decision they made. If you want to polyfill, or, or I'm just going to say shim. If you want to shim a new well-known symbol and you want to do it faithfully for multiple realms without prior coordination, you have to use a registered symbol. And if you're doing that, then one of the things you need to polyfill, which you can, so it's okay, uh, is you need to polyfill the weak maps themselves uh, so that they can use the shimmed uh, well-known symbol, which is actually a registered symbol as a weak map key. And uh, to, in order to shim the weak map, to do that, you would have to wrap a genuine weak map and a genuine map use the predicate to see what kind of symbol it is. And if it's a registered symbol, uh, uh, put it in the internal map rather than in the internal weak map. So it's a mess, but it's okay because shims are often a mess. So, so, so no objection. Yep. Yeah, I have a yeah. feeling nobody's gonna bother with that. As I, as I commented in that progress, uh, I pointed out that uh, well-known symbols behaves like registered symbols, so I do not support to make them available as weak map keys. I, I agree um, uh, that it, I think it would have been better to treat well-known symbols and registered symbols the same because um, they, you know, in terms of their fundamental properties, they really are the same. Um, but um, but even with this, you know, bad decision, we can still shim it. So, I mean, it's an interesting shimming a new well-known symbol is an interesting uh, is an interesting constraint that it might not have been um, correct, completely understood when the decision was made. Uh, if well-known symbols were disallowed, uh, then as you say, a shim becomes a lot easier. Yep. Yeah. For like, you, you can shim a new well-known symbol by just creating a registered symbol. Yep. Um, you don't have to patch anything else. And you don't have, and you don't have to shim neither weak map or shadow realm. Yep. yep. It's not only shadow realm, it's like uh, iframes and all, all kind of things that you yeah. And I, I don't think this point was brought up. No. We can we can we can definitely raise that up and I can do the follow-up via email with the with the champions and see how far they they went into this. There, there might be something there, right? Yeah. Um, on the predicates, do you have any comments, any, any observation? No, it's unfortunate, but I understand the reasons for uh, the limitation. So, uh, because if we're, if we have a predicate for weak map keys, we're going to be stuck with that result, uh, even if the keys change in the future. So, it, yeah, it, it is what it is. Yeah. 
I, I like the fact that there are symbols is, is a good uh, trade off for now. So, yeah, the fact that they're, yeah, being able to, to have a predicate for well known symbols. Um, uh, so, so right now we've got some symbols that are not static properties on the symbol constructor that are um, treated as well known by some implementations or uh, what is the status of that? What was, uh, I remember it being very confused. That, the that was very confused. thing in Intel. <laughs> is that what it was? I think it's the one symbol that you can only get through uh, to um, a dynamic call in some weird case. Yeah, the fallback. And it was in Intel. And it was the same across realms? I think implementations diverged there. I see. And the spec didn't say anything? I don't. I honestly don't quite remember. I know that one is very weird. And it's, uh, I think according to the spec, it is a well-known symbol. Okay. Uh, but it isn't, yeah. So, yeah. So the other thing is, um, uh, I mean, not, not for the records and tuples folk necessarily to be the ones to, to iron this out. But I think it, it's, you know, we're, we're, we have one of these almost invariants in the language that could be a genuine invariant um, uh, if we clean things up, which is that the symbols that are named by string named properties on the symbol constructor are exactly the well-known symbols. Um, and the, I think it's very unfortunate that there seems to be a well-known symbol that's not, in, that's not a static property of the symbol constructor, just because it's a almost regularity that could as well be a regularity at this point. Yeah, they touched on that yesterday, but I didn't follow up on, on that one, uh, saying that they also resolved the, the Intel symbol. Is that the one? Martin? Yeah, the Intel fallback something. Yeah. When you say they resolved it, what did they? What was the resolution? I don't know. I don't know. Let me find out the notes. Let me. Let me okay. Um, sorry, which well-known symbol are you talking about that is not on the symbol constructor? I never heard of that. Matthew, I think that's a question for you. So you sorry, to say again. I got distracted. Jack. Uh, which which well known symbol are you talking about that are not on the symbol constructor? Uh, I've never seen that before. It's the Intel fallback symbol. I don't remember where you find it. It's it, you have to call Intel with some Intel API with some specially shaped object, and then it gets added to that object. It's it's really really strange. When I first saw that, like. A couple of months ago, I was like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> um, it, and what is it used for? It's used for backwards compatibility with some earlier Intel uh, API. Uh, can we add it into the language as a former uh, well-known symbol? So I think that's what Mark is suggesting. Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, and I believe that's what Carity is looking up to see what the resolution was. Um, looking at the notes, uh, there's only one reference that uh, Ron Ashley is saying uh, Intel symbol is making it more difficult to include. Um, uh, there was some comments around that, but yeah. yeah. There's nothing else on the on the notes. I'll I'll, I'll send an email. Um, I honestly don't 
I, I would need to look up again where uh, that thing is, but uh, it, it is it is just a weird symbol. I'm trying to look through Jordan's. Yeah, there we go. If you look at Jordan's uh, is well known symbol package, he actually has the test on how to reach for it. Oh, uh, sorry, it was the Intel fallback symbol. I did the wrong one. And does the Intel spec say that it's well known or is it just that some implementations treat it as well known and some don't? I think according to uh, the spec, it is just well known. Okay. Let me... Here is how to reach for it. I guess I can screen share. Yeah, so you have to do some weird calling of date time formats with some proto and stuff, and then the symbol gets added uh, to that object from what I remember. Uh, so here is the spec for the spec text for that is just that, which doesn't say anything about being a well-known symbol. In, in fact, it says it's not a well-known symbol. Oh, is that what it does? Uh, that's a four or two. You have to go four or two. Oh, um, just do just replace ECMA four or two at the end. Of it. Yeah, it says it's a new symbol in the current realm. That means that's weird. Okay, so it's supposed to not be. Uh, so it's supposed to be parallel. There's so if it's still, if we can still make this consistent, if we still have a choice about which way to make this consistent, which it sounds like we do, like we do. Um, uh, I have one argument that for preferring it to be not a well-known symbol. Uh, which is the entire Intel package is optional. Um, uh, whereas if we make, if it's a well-known symbol, then it needs to be a property on the symbol constructor. Um, uh, or, you know, I, I say it would need to be a property in the symbol constructor. And of course the symbol constructor exists and should have stable properties whether or not uh, Intel is present. So putting it on the on the symbol constructor creates this odd coupling to um, uh, between the mandatory symbol constructor and the optional Intel package. I think I found the issue. Can you paste the link in the chat? Right. Oh, the other thing, of course, is that. Uh, simply a non well known symbol, an anonymous symbol, one that's not neither well known nor registered, is also just trivial to, sh to shim, which is you just, the, the, the shim just creates a new symbol, and that's sort of the end of the shimming. Because the shim would be separately initialized in each realm. Right. So I wonder how many code will be affected if it's changed from well-known symbol to program um, program symbol. Probably no, we'll be rocking by that. Yeah, my, my suspicion would be no, nothing breaks if you do that, other than maybe test code. Okay, this is probably the uh, issue that uh, Ashley mentioned. 
he filed an issue on 402. So apparently Spider Monkey is unique per realm and V8 uh, and JavaScript core are the same across realms. Okay, that, that pretty much establishes that no code is going to break um, because it would already break on Firefox. Yeah. Huh, apparently uh, you were pinged. <laughs> All right. Who was pinged? You. <laughs> oh, okay. Jordan pinged you. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the 402 issue that uh, was linked. Um, I think I would be in favor of making it uh, non well known. Yeah, definitely not well known. Good. And that means the spec is already correct. So let's see. Correct. just need test to fail on uh, V8 and uh, NGSC, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Yeah, um, uh, I'll do follow up with the, my Fox there on uh, 402. Cool. Um, I think we might have reached the end of the topic on symbols. Yep. Did you want to talk about um, HTML integration and the fun topic of current realm. Yeah, it's probably a quick update there. So one of the discussion has been around the changes that we had to do on the HTML side. Um, uh, it's it worth um, noticing that in the HTML specs, all the different specs that they have there, there is a reference to the current the current realm and also the current global object. And, and uh, we got a little, a little bit of a pushback from HML Fox saying, well, we have to change all this and do a inventory of all the places where we use these. So uh, I, 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 do you have enough understanding of what the their definition of current realm and current object and their and why it's there and what it's used for is uh, because so, I, I still don't quite understand what the, the purpose is. So when we when we start working on shadow realm, the the main issue with the with the integration with HML was that there was a one to one to one relationship between a realm, a global object, and uh, and so on, and that is no longer the case now. Uh, but it's specifically is the, the is the the global object, the realm, and what they what they call the context of the setting object, which is basically the um, the, op the object that contains all the information about the environment. Like uh, this is really the the the, the, the window, um, the, the details of the window. Um, so that one to one to one relationship is now brought, uh, is now no longer true because you might have multiple global objects and ROM that are under the same setting objects. So it's no longer uh, one to one to one. But wasn't it already the case with the uh, iframes before? No, no, it was not. The iframe has its own settings. Oh, right. okay. Um, so as a result of that, now in the places where we you reference the current ROM or the current global object, uh, and so on, which is referencing to this one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one relationship, no longer uh, holds water. So you now have to do an inventory of, of, of all that and either say the current realm or the current global object, or you have to say the current, the, the root, the current root uh, realm or the current root uh, global object or the current, uh, or the current settings uh, object. So there's an inventory that needs to happen now. And this is, this is only on the HTML side. It doesn't affect on the HTML side. On the HTML side. Well, so they were trying to uh, put some work on, uh, on the TC39 side, but I'm not sure I understood how that was feasible. Yeah, but... yeah. So there was yeah. a pushback there. Uh, so Dominic proposed a couple of options. Option one is to take the bullet and do it in HTML. 
option or oh, uh, that's option two. Option one for him was to make changes in 262 to somehow introduce the concept of uh, the current realm and the root realm, which in 262 we don't have that. So we'll have to make significant changes to um, define that new concept because in, we just don't have it. Like this is on the host, it's not on the on the language itself. Um, so I feel that uh, a few comments there in the thread, and it seems that people are starting to realize that maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe option two is the way to go. Just making the changes, taking the bullet, uh, updating everything, and then uh, we go from there. Somebody, uh, should, somebody should warn them that when they refer to current global object, uh, they're going to need to do an inventory again once compartments are introduced. Right. Well, good the hell we get there. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm not going to say anything, to be honest. I'll, I'll just shut up. Okay. Like, if yeah, option two is option two, we'll go with that, and then we do another inventory down the road. But Yeah, it might be, it might be good to do a proactive reach out there, see if they can do one refactor of uh, the HTML spec uh, instead of two, but... Yeah, somebody should warn them. <laughs> not well, me either. I I volunteer uh, I volunteer Chris because he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's it. Uh, I think um, Anik was okay with maybe option two. So we'll, I'll, I'll do some follow up there, but uh, hopefully we can close that. Uh, loop and then move on on making the changes uh, everywhere. We can get some help from maybe from Igali or someone to go and do the bulk of the work. So actually, it's not only the global object. Uh, from what I remember, the module map is per uh, settings object, right? And with this change, the module map is still per settings object, but it will be keyed by, uh, by realm. The instances of those modules, yes, per realm, yeah. The, the module graph is per realm. Yeah, the module graph has to be per realm, but it's still going to be a single module map uh, mm -hmm. for the whole uh, settings object, mm -hmm. except that there will, yeah, there will be different multiple module graphs in it. And with compartments, there will also be multiple so for compartments, I guess it will be switching that uh, module map to be keyed per compartment instead of being keyed per realm. Right. I have a feeling we need to get a little bit familiar on how that whole settings object and module map and global uh, object are uh, threaded through in HTML because I have no idea how that works. How, Kerry, how confident are you that um, HTML is going to be able to do that audit and and figure out every usage of current object realm and things. So, so that I am? How, are you, how confident are you that HTML is going to be able to like do that refactor? Or are we going to get more pushback that option two? No, I, think, I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. Um, it's just a matter of someone has to do the work. Someone has to take that bullet. and kind of the hot potato, but maybe we can we can figure who can do that. And it's just that it's in different different aspects. So we have to do it in multiple places. So but so that matches my understanding like 262 doesn't have a notion of current 
uh, realm or anything like that. I mean, it, it has a notion of current realm in, this, in the sense that it's the one executing right now. The fact that um, the, the incubator realm is nothing special in the sense of, uh, of 262. Technically, it could stop executing uh, completely and never have anything back on the stack anymore, on its stack anymore. So it shouldn't be any more special than any other realm shadow or not. All right, well, thanks for the updates. I believe we have reached our topics. Uh, if, yeah, I think that's good enough for today. <laughs> Um, I suppose we're, uh, so next week is plenary, uh, and after that, uh, we usually take a week off, but um, we should keep an eye on the agenda if anyone wants to discuss something. All right. Thanks, everyone.